are nearing the city of Würzburg. On the right hand side, if you look out of the right windows, you can see on the hill uh, the Festung Marienberg, the fortress Mary's Mountain, uh, the local castle overlooking this. Um, the local castle um, overlooking the city of Würzburg. Würzburg is a city in this area, it has approximately 130,000 inhabitants, and um, actually 40,000 of these 130,000 are students. Würzburg is a university city, a student city. Um, you really notice this when uh, being out on the streets, uh, you see a lot of young people. Um, it's a very lively, very vibrant city. And that's, by the way, actually also how I ended up here, because I'm originally from Hamburg, a larger port city in the northern parts of Germany, and I came here to Würzburg for med school. I'm in my fourth year now, and I um, quite enjoy living in the city and also the university. Um, this castle, the fortress up on the hill, um, was formerly inhabited by um, the former ruler of Würzburg, and they were called the Prince Bishops of Würzburg. And the name of their office uh, already kind of gives it away. Um, <coughs> these people were not only um, the local bishops, but they were also princes, the local dukes, the local worldly political rulers. And um, so they combined political and spiritual power in just one person. This started in 1156 and it went on until uh, the days of Napoleon. Um, in 1804 he came to Würzburg and he um, divided church and state again. And with him the age of the prince bishops was over. But for approximately 650 years um, the local uh, bishops were also the local godly rulers. Kind of a theocracy like we have it in Iran or <coughs> some places today. But obviously these were Catholic bishops. <laughs> to the right hand side between um, the trees you can already see some glimpses and now you can see it better you see a green building to the right um, this was um, built um, by a British architect Sarah Hadid um, this is the um, Max Planck Institute for uh, the research into um, silicate um, uh, molecules, basically. And um, the entire facade is just made out of uh, glass. This is a pretty good example that today Würzburg tries to combine um, its rich history, um, all of its culture, all of the very old buildings, um, with also being um, there's some um, departments um, on, on the cutting edge of modern science. Um, um, uh, is trying to be a very modern city as well. A lot of green initiatives. Um, most of the power is generated by uh, wind or water. Um, so they, uh, they try to do both remember their past but also think about their future. To the left hand side you can see uh, kind of the skyline of the um, old city center. You see a lot of church spires. The city center alone has 36 churches and uh, of these 36 churches, actually 30 are Catholic churches. There are only six um, uh, Protestant Lutheran churches here in Würzburg. 90% um, of the population of the city are uh, Catholics. And um, 
obviously uh, religion doesn't play uh, quite as large a role anymore as it did in former times, but it is still um, uh, very much an important component of uh, living here. <coughs> and to the right hand side, you can, um, once we've gone over the traffic lights, get uh, a better view of the uh, festival again, of the fortress, the castle. And to the left hand side, you will, once uh, the traffic light has turned green, um, get a view over the old or the Alte Mainbrücke, the old stone bridge over the River Main. Um, this bridge is approximately 800 years old that you're about to see to the left hand side. And it is um, with this one of uh, the oldest, if not the oldest, stone bridge in. Uh, in Germany, yeah, to the left hand side, we have a good look over it. I thought it was McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it is with these um, the statues of saints uh, lining it, um, pretty similar, I would say, to the Karls Bridge in Prague. Um, comes from the same time period, and uh, um, in those days. Prague was also part of the German Empire, so there was a lot of connection between these cities. Mm -hmm. Is that our ship? I think it is. Mm -hmm. No, um, uh, your ship has not yet arrived, but uh, will um, lie there uh, eventually. Um, we suggest two other here. Viking ships that are also in town. Uh, is a very popular city with the Viking towns. Alright, straight ahead we see the glimpses of the chapel, um, a little pilgrim's chapel up on the hill. Um, these onion shaped domes are a bit. Uh, these onion shaped uh, domes are uh, reminiscent of the architecture of the Russian Orthodoxy. Um, but this is a Catholic chapel as well. Um, the architect was just inspired by um, these uh, Eastern European influences, basically, when he made his designs for this chapel. It is a pilgrim's chapel housing a reliquary. Also, yeah, unten gerade aus. And. Um, People from at least all over the region um, come there to pray in front of a very old, hand-carved wooden statue of Mother Mary. Um, and because there were some reports of miracles happening um, to people who prayed in front of this statue, um, like ailments being cured, um, sicknesses being um, um, relief basically uh, stuff like that and that's why still today people um, do a pilgrimage there and um, they donate a piece of art to the chapel and they pray in front of it and they hope that this will um, benefit them. A lot of the houses to the right hand side of the street are actually fraternities student fraternities. Greek life um, has some similarities to Greek life uh, in the States, but there are also some differences. Similarities would obviously, uh, for example, be the drinking, the partying, um, the bond for life, trying to help each other out later in life. Um, differences um, might be, for example, that um, because these fraternities are very old and they are deep, uh, steeped in, uh, very deep in uh, a lot of traditions, um, for at least two thirds of these fraternities, you would at least have to learn fencing, and with one third of them, you would still be required to fight fencing duels with anybody that offended you from. Other fraternity. Um, this is obviously a bit strange, but believe me, um, there are a lot of people um, higher up in German society um, where you can still see the facial scars of the fancy days. And so uh, this 
true, people still do that here. This is obviously also one reason why there are not as many sororities. Um, the uh, women obviously don't fence, and um, the sororities are a pretty new phenomenon. Uh, they have been founded in recent years because uh, there were a lot of women who were kind of envious and said, well, it's not fair that there are no, um, no sororities, no um, student bodies for women. And so they founded new ones, but the uh, traditional um, ones with the long history are all fragilities.